Welcome to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast where you will discover creative ways to improve your health and well-being. Someone may have told you that art isn't for you, but they were wrong. Anyone can create arts for the health of it. No talent or experience necessary. I'm just a little songbird. Try to fly my way homeward with the melody and I make the beat. Don't know where it'll take me, take me. Cause when I'm in the dark of night, I sing my way back to the light. Come along with me and your heart will see that a song changes everything. Oh. At the Arts for the Health of It podcast, so we're gonna we're gonna going to um, record our introduction because today's episode was super moving and super powerful, and I I can't wait for everyone to listen or to watch Ro in action today. I am still I still am processing everything that just happened, and it was so beautiful. Um, by the way, I'm Constanza Raider, your co-host. Oh yeah, and I'm Richard Wilmore, your host. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think one of the I think this podcast was such a powerful example about the power that we have in our own creativity and our own imagination to envision and create and step into a better world for ourselves. Um Ro is the founder of um Girl Stance, which helps empower girls to to see themselves as confident and powerful and lovable um, and really celebrates who they are. And they use yoga and mindfulness in the arts um, and all these pieces to help them really uncover their true identity as separate from the labels that may have been put on them. Uh, and at the end of the episode, Rose does this a beautiful moving me- uh, meditation, like visualization and guided meditation that you guys will just love. Um, I recommend you don't do this while you're driving, though. <laughs> no, or while you're maybe around other people because there were tears <laughs> we were all behind the scenes again. of this episode, on the screen of this episode. <laughs> I love that when you go on the um, Girl Stance website, right away, the first thing I saw was mission and power. And in just like yeah. big, bold. And I was like, all right, great. Like, it I'm was on like, board. yeah, no, no words needed to like know exactly what they're doing. And I, and, and she is on such a mission to make it mm. worldwide that I'm so thankful that I stalked her online and asked her to come <laughs> on um, and that she was here because, ugh. So good. What did she? Yes. What did she say that that she doesn't have a a um? What did she say? Just she that she doesn't have a mentor? No. What's the word she used? Oh well. At one point, we asked her like, "Well, who? You know, you're a mentor to all these girls. Like, who is your mentor? Maybe we don't give this away. Like, the answer to her question may surprise you. But I thought well, the answer to mine is now Ro. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love her. She's amazing. She, uh, I'll read you her bio. I'm going to read you a couple things because she, the way she speaks, I don't even understand half the words she says. And so, because she's too smart for me, but um, <laughs> her bio, she says she's undefined yet a warrior of many skills and talents. She identifies herself as the divine paradox of existence. Mm. Although Roa is trained in many skills and certified as an advanced yoga teacher, she chooses not to identify with her roles, but instead show up as needed and inspire through the art of being authentically her. Mm. She's an artist and a yoga and meditation. She says me- artist and yoga and meditation is my language. Mm. Uh, when I share space to guide others through a yoga or meditation session, I set an intention to open their heart space to allow life to fully express itself. I'm a vocal artist, a moving artist, visual artist, and currently mastering the art of being. Mm. I use the art to heal, transmute, and transform dysfunctional patterns at the level of thought, feeling, and behavior. Ugh. 
I have goosebumps. I, I know, just... I know. Rose is so cool. And I can't wait for you to hear this. I want to be her you. friend. And so yeah. if you're going to listen to this, just know that I want to be a friend. <laughs> All right. And you will too after you listen or watch to this episode. But What's real these days? That's true. <laughs> um, this is so true. No, but how are... I get we should start there with what's real and what's virtual over at Girl Stance. Tell mm. everybody, Ro, mm. what it it I mean, you you're so working like with like hands on with all of these young girls. How are you doing that virtually? It's been a challenge virtually. Um, but we've we've actually been doing a lot of in-person stuff um in small groups. It was very challenging because I knew that what we offered could not be translated virtually or makes mm -hmm. the greatest impact in a virtual setting. However, we did continue to offer um, sessions, virtual sessions for the girls to work with several instructors here to kind of cope with some of their anxieties and the things that they were experiencing when it comes to social anxieties and the fears that we were all collectively having. Um, so we were able to offer a series of virtual sessions with different mentors and different instructors throughout this process. But um, we've had, we've, we've still gathered in person um, in small groups and protected as well. But it's been a challenge and I miss them so much. And we're getting back to in-person stuff this summer. So I'm excited about that. Oh, we were it's exciting. Exciting okay. to like maybe see a light at the end of the tunnel, right? Yes. <laughs> we just we just met about a, an event space today for our gala and like in person, like what would that be this is like? A possibility? Like, <laughs> so yeah, so it's crazy. So yeah, it feels like forever ago. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we we you know we we specialize in retreat style education, so we do a lot of outdoor retreats. And throughout this entire time, I mean, the CDC pretty much agreed that outdoors was the safest place. So when it wasn't cold outdoors, and I, I live in Chattanooga, Chattanooga is a beautiful outdoor city. When it wasn't cold outdoors, we would go out um, in the open space mm -hmm. and we would gather in a very open environment and section ourselves with space and just kind of talk and stretch and breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a bit, uh, uh, share a bit with our listeners about like you, the Girl Stance has such an awesome mission and I'd love for you to share that and also your vision, like there's there's an, an interesting line in your vision statement that I wanna highlight after you, you talk, but I'm, anyway, I'm very okay. excited to hear more about it. Yeah, so Girl Stance Missions is to create a safe space uh, for girls to truly actualize their highest potential. And we utilize that, uh, or we utilize tools of yoga, meditation and mindfulness to do that. And what we specialize in is to help girls transmute dysfunctional patterns that show up as a cycle of repression in the black um, communities. We help them transmute and transform that so that they can walk as compassionate, interconnected citizens in the world. You know, I think that's so important. Um, and the reason I started this is because my own experience growing up in underserved communities and my own experiences with trauma. And um, I realized, you know, I've always watched people serve the community in such a way of giving food and possibly even throwing, you know, funds to help an initiative, but we've always missed this inner component. So Girl Stance is that mm. gap, that bridge, that gap that will bridge all of it together. You know, we do need the funds, we do need the economic support, but we also need that inner, that inner connectivity. We need that, um, the inner resource is what I call it. So our tagline is guiding young, heart, young, guiding young hearts and strengthening inner resources. Mm, I love that. And you guys do incorporate um, a specifically arts element mm -hmm. in your retreats. Can you talk a little bit about that and why you include the arts in your retreats? Absolutely. So it's so interesting, you know, when I was reached out to do this podcast, I was like, you know, I never really thought how impactful art was in our program, but I, I realized like, duh, it's in me. That's why <laughs> this is a part of the program. So our very first retreat, our very first camp was called Yoga Art and Empowerment Camp. Mm. Um, 
The, and you didn't know art was a big part of it. And right. it was in <laughs> the name of your retreat. That was the name of the first retreat. And then we changed it to like youth retreat, yoga youth retreats. We changed it to that, but we always kept an art component hmm. in it. Um, and this year, actually COVID helped me realize how important art was. Hmm. And in our retreats, we oftentimes, we always have an, um, an artist come in or we just have a slew of paint around and we asked the girls to take their yoga mats. They get free yoga mats. We asked them to take their yoga mats and, and just draw on it, draw something that's gonna invoke them to come to the mat, something that's gonna invoke them to smile and to be present when they're on their mat. Um, so we've always done that component, but we also have different artists that comes in and do empowerment art, whether it be torso art or- Wait, wait, torso art? Yes, where's my torso piece? Oh, I don't have it around. So oh, like, go tell me about this. Okay. It's like a blank torso canvas, like a female torso. Ah. Yes, and we have an artist that comes, she specializes in torso art and she does this um, feminine embodiment session with the girls where she allows the art or the paint, I can't, I'm, I'm te terrible, I'm butchering her purpose here, but <laughs> she allows the paint to move over the torso and I mean, it's so beautiful. It's just such a beautiful thing. I should have sent you guys some pictures. We just had you, one this weekend. I think oh, you cool. did send a picture. I'm going to look for it while we're chatting and okay. um, put it up. Because I now that you say that, I, that I think I remember seeing a torso huge now. bell. Yeah. You sent an amazing amount of photos. So I yeah. just want to find it. But keep talking. And then I yeah. will find it. I'm so we always artist. have some type of art component. My belief when it comes to art is that art is an expression of freedom. So in such a world that we live in, you know, it's no secret that it's been a, a mental, I, I like to think of uh, repression and the idea that certain cultures aren't free to express themselves authentically, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to art, art has always been a way for many people that lived in underserved communities to express themselves freely without any consequence, right? Mm -hmm. Or judgment. So I love to just open that space because I truly believe we have to allow all emotions out mm -hmm. and through. And if we are afraid to say it, then draw it. If you're afraid mm. to, if you're feeling like you want to act on it and you know it's not the best thing to act on, then slap slap some paint on, you know, throw some <laughs> paint on the wall, do something yes. with the art, you know what I mean? So I've always seen art as a way to fully express what you're feeling, harm to none. Hmm. I love that. Mm. I what that it made, immediately made me think of um this time, so I'm a leukemia survivor, and when I was a teenager, there was a um, organization that supported kids and families with uh, families that had kids with cancer. And um, there was a teen group, and one of the we did a lot of arts activities, and one of the activities we did was breaking plates and other like porcelain materials. Oh. oh my god. Yes. It was amazing. <laughs> you just took the plate and you just threw it against the wall and it just shattered and it felt awesome. Yes. And then we took those shattered pieces and we picked up the parts that we wanted to keep and then we turned it into this like beautiful mosaic. And it was just the most cathartic experience of allowing those negative emotions to be expressed and then taking those shattered pieces and then rearranging them and making it into something beautiful and kind of regaining some some control and some agency in yeah. the brokenness like of course the 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 parallels and the um uh the parallels to what was going on in our lives obviously is was not lost on us um anyway so it just made me and it, it kind of made me think about that you know it, it's you're so right like the art can art can be the safe container um for whatever it is we're feeling yeah absolutely what was the line in the vision statement that you love so much oh okay okay <laughs> um let me find it so you have a great vision statement i love it so can i read the vision statement i'm yeah. just gonna read the whole thing okay, okay. Um, by 2028, and I love that you have like 
a, a date to it. We expect to change the trajectory of black girls lives and increase the contribution of black girls in the 21st century. We want every girl to be seen, heard and celebrated. They should have the emotional, social and practical skills necessary to overcome obstacles in their advancement. Girls should be able to succeed in school, college, workplaces and their communities and build the inner and outer skills that will help them reach economic prosperity and dignity as adults. Ugh, love it. Yes. So the line that stuck out to me is we want every girl to be seen, heard and celebrated. Mm -hmm. So in our mission statement or our vision statement is that is for the universal accessibility of arts engagement so that everyone facing life altering health challenges can feel seen and heard and loved. Yeah. So that idea of, of the healing power of feeling seen and heard, and I love your word celebrated, you know, mm -hmm. that idea of feeling loved and celebrated for your uniqueness um, is so powerful. Um, and I'd love to hear about the impact that your program has on these girls when they do feel seen and heard and celebrated. And it sounds like you guys are giving them opportunities in various ways of doing that, how that shifts and what impact that makes on them. Yes, I have a funny story. It's 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 a little bougie, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's it's interesting. Um, some of my girls are graduating this year, so they're going off to college, and I keep in contact with them just to see how they're transitioning. Um, so the girls usually come, you know, pretty conditioned um, to their normal ways of thinking and in, in their community. You know, for example, I, I always take my girls out to nice places with beautiful ambiance and make them feel like they're, you know, they're valued and that they deserve to eat quality foods and be in quality places. Because we hear a lot of times here um, that certain parts of our city that black people in general or black young girls don't feel like they belong. And I said, well, why is that? Mm -hmm. You know, just walk in and own it. You know, so <laughs> yes. one of the things I teach them is just to walk in and own it. And I said, the energy you're putting out is what makes you feel like you, you don't belong. I said, when people stare, it doesn't mean you don't belong. It means you're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm writing that down. That's, that's, I'm that. feeling that. Quotable. <laughs> Can you say that again? Yes. When people stare, that doesn't mean you're not belong. That means you're fabulous. <laughs> I you know that's going to be on title. all of our social media posts for this episode. <laughs> yeah. So I, stay, I instill that in them. So one of the parents reached out to me and she said, I don't know what you're, you've taught my daughter, but she doesn't want McDonald's anymore. She's like, Ooh. take me to Hannah's or take me to Leah's. Like Miss Rose said that I deserve to eat here. Mm. <laughs> that's what she learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say you better tell them, girl. And, uh, <laughs> but the the same girl, she's she's going off to college and practicing law, and uh, wow. she's feeling very confident about herself. She's she you know she naturally has some nervousness in there, but um, I can tell just being a part of the program has really helped her identify that inner talk because that's truly what um, hinders us sometimes is the inner talk and allowing the outer stuff to penetrate. So mm -hmm. I, I like we do a lot of mindfulness work and like I said, art and journaling and things of that nature. So when we hear things, you know, that's not true for us, I, I try to guide them into um, discerning whether they can whether they want to receive that or not. And just tuning into the inner authority. And I can tell like she's just so confident. She's not nervous. You know, law is she she did express to me this past weekend that law is, you know, it's different. It's still an environment. Um, with predominantly white males. And I said, well, hey, just go in there and be fabulous. You know, don't, <laughs> yes. don't allow that to, you know, deter you or discourage you. Mm. She's very confident. She's wanting to go in and change things. She's like, I just don't agree with some of these laws and I want to go in and change. So she already has the energy and the dynamic personality to just make change for, for her cause and what she loves. That's awesome. Yeah. When did you, um, when did you, found girl stance late 2017 okay yeah it was always in my heart but i didn't act on it until yeah late 2017 so i served in a lot of at-risk schools <clears throat> here in chattanooga which is predominantly black and under-resourced and i was doing after-school camps uh, with yoga and art and 
from there, I say, you know, well, I want to make it available to everyone, not just certain schools. So I just launched my own program in 2018, the summer of 2018, we did our first camp. And then we've just been growing since then. It's been such a beautiful experience. As a nonprofit founder, was it one of those things, I mean, you did it out of the your need for it. So what was the response when when you went public with it? Was was there a line already around the block of people waiting to get in? Or were you like, excuse me, I'm over here. Yes, so we sold out the first camp. Mm. And we continue to like having, we're, we're continuously having to put a limit on how many mm. people can participate. Mm. So I think it was such a, a beautiful thing for the community because a lot of people for one, don't believe that yoga is for them. So mm. the title of yoga was just interesting. I was like, well, I've always, I always see people doing yoga and, you know, um, in different cultures, but I never thought that black people can do yoga or that it was for something for mm. black people. So young girls just jumped on it. A lot of parents heard, um, well, a lot of parents follow me on social media and seen my shift. You know, a lot of my peers are the mothers of these young girls. So mm. they seen my growth and they were like, huh, she, she did a change in her. And I would love for my daughter to know that because she, she needs some of her emotional, you know, capability. So that's that's how it happened the first year. Now this year it's just growing so much. I mean, we had applications coming in even during COVID for the retreats. And I'm Aww. like, guys, we're not having the retreat this year. Aww. Heartbreaking. They were like, yeah, they were like, they need this. This is something we really need. My children are experiencing a lot of anxiety and you know, it's, it looks like symptoms of depression. They really need this role. So it was hard not to have it this year. But like mm. I said, we still had our virtual uh, resource. Mm. Yeah, it was tough to not be able to access the people that you're there for in the time that they probably need it the most, like yeah, COVID. Absolutely. That was, I think, the toughest part for us was like, no, this is this is exactly when when we when we're <laughs> needed in in the in that space. So that had to have been tough for you. Yeah. It definitely was, and I tried to encourage them to do the work that we learned. Mm. You know, because that's what it's all about. You know, when we experience moments like this, you have to go back to the references of the tools that you're taught and you actually have to apply them. So it's another level to understanding. I always tell people this. I say you have two levels of understanding. You have an intellect and then you have the application. So you can intellectually understand something. Then you have to apply it to actually embody what you understand and become that. So mm. I'm, all, I'm just always encouraging them embody that truth if you say that these things help you and if you're an artist and if you're free to express yourself embody that true you can speak these words but do you walk that walk you know mm. so you you talk about you know the the transformation and perspective that I, it sounds like you kind of come along these girls to try to elevate empower them help them help change the narrative that they might have in their head about themselves. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you maybe gone through a similar transformation. Was there someone in your life that helped you on, on that journey for you or what was, what, what was involved in, in your process? Oh, that's a interesting question. You know, people always ask me that, like, who is your, who is your role <laughs> model? And I'm like, a higher version of myself. Ah. <laughs> Is that a good answer? You know, I think people always look at me crazy when I say that. It's like, I've always had this vision of a confident me, a sure me, a mm. resilient me, a um, a leader. And it was me in this vision. It was never a Beyonce or an Oprah or anybody like that. It was literally me. And I'm, I never knew the path to get there. Mm. But this vision that I had was always me. And I think naturally when you hold a vision of something you know you manifest it mm. and you you can't control how that manifestation will happen so i tell people all the time yoga fell in my lap i think it's a part of me holding that vision it just fell in my lap the way it happened was just so it's just so crazy i went to a yoga class i'll make it short but i went to a yoga class and it was so great. I um, went to the class because my job offered discounted rates for a yoga class. Hmm. So I went to the class. I was like, well, let me try yoga. I've never tried yoga ever in my life. I've never even heard of this stuff. And I don't do the gym. I'm not a good gym person. <laughs> um, 
So I go to your class and I'm like, oh my God, this I'm floating. Is this what feeling like, what is that called? Um, I don't know, like a psychedelic. I'm like, is this what this feels like? <laughs> <laughs> it feels so a great. natural high. Right. And um, from there, I just kept going. I kept going. I ended up practicing with a yoga teacher or one, a lady that owned a yoga studio. And she approached me. She was like, hey, would you would you ever want to teach? I'm like, no, I don't know. This is for me. I'm not interested in teaching yoga. <laughs> and she just kept pushing, pushing, pushing in. Um, she told me, she was like, well, it's going to cost this much money to be certified. I was like, and that's why I don't want to teach because I don't want to tell you that. Uh, <laughs> she was like, well, actually, we have scholarships, so you should come. I'm like, this woman is not going to leave me alone. Let me, <laughs> let me just go. And I ended up going and it was so tough for me. I felt so out of place. I was like, mm. this is nothing. What am I? What have I signed up for? But it was so transformational um, for me. And it was I think it was because. I mean, it's going to sound so cliche and simple, but I think it's because of just recognizing my breath, mm. which is so transformational for me. And she also had a lot of art. Like yoga schools actually have a lot of art mm -hmm. in their there, teacher training. There's a lot of overlap, I think, in in yoga and art. And mm -hmm. our um, artists even went through a training recently with a, a yoga therapist that was teaching essentially yogic and mindfulness principles and applying them to arts, different arts practices. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and just, I mean, the overlap, the, there's, just, there is just a lot of overlap, you know, when we're creating, you know, yoga from what I understand means to yoke, right. Mm -hmm. To yoke like the physical, with the breath and the mental and all of that. Right. Yes. Um, and when we are creating, we are doing something with our body to uh -huh. express or connect with an internal reality. Um, and there's a, a strong mindfulness flow state inducing um, element of creative of creativity. Um, so it makes sense to me that there's, you know, I see a lot of overlap there. Yeah, absolutely. And yoga, the yoga elements, or the yoga principles actually align very well with the elements of art. I don't have the list with me, but I did a research paper not too long ago and I, I seen it and I was like, oh, there are elements of art. It's like balance. Um, I can't think of all of them, but I know balance is one. Uh, what is the other? Um, unity. Mm. These are the elements of art. And then when I seen that, I'm like, wow, that's those are aligned with the principles of yoga. You know, even though if we look at, we're looking at balance and art in a different way, respectively, but it's very similar to what we're trying to accomplish with yoga, which is harmony, unity, and balance. You know, and unity and art may mean something totally different intellectually mm. than what that means in yoga, but at its base level, it's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it's just a beautiful connection, but um, yeah, what, what transformed my life in yoga was really the breath. And from there, it was it was almost like just being still allowed me to recognize a lot of um, societal beliefs that I then decided that wasn't true for me. I'm like, mm. you know what? I don't. Huh. Do I have to believe this about myself, about my cultural about me as a do I have to believe this? I, I think I'm free to think the way I want to think. Mm. 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 You know, it's just it when you're still in that space, it really awakens this understanding of, huh, do who is someone telling me what to think? Mm. <laughs> You know, and then when you when you discover that it's 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 a continuous cycle. I mean, I still go through it. I'm not purged completely of you know different thoughts and things, but I'm always being aware of. Well, do I want to believe that I'm the least protected? You know, it was um, an ex an experience in our culture where you know with the Breonna Taylor thing, and people were saying that Black women were the least protected. I was like, well, do I want to believe that? Mm. You know, is that something I want to take on? I can respect what has happened and what it looks like, but is that something that I choose to believe about myself? Because mm. I've done a ton of things. I've been out 
in so many different uh, states, walking in dark alleys and doing very weird stuff by myself, <laughs> never been harmed. And I'm like, you know, well, in my tangible experience, I don't want to, I don't want to believe that about myself. Hmm. Wow. That's a really interesting, fascinating thought. You know, how, how much were the, the external narrative affects what we take on and into our identity and our narrative about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that we have a choice. And I think, would you, it sounds like the choice about what you want to take on as your personal narrative and your identity has to start with awareness. Absolutely. And stillness. Yeah. And I'm, and you have a, an activity for us, um, for our listeners to do today, right? Mm -hmm. To kind of like, explore this a little bit yeah yeah i yeah. can't wait i we we always learn something very cool from our guests richard okay. do you have any questions before we get to that yes i have a couple and then i uh ro also sent over some really great photos of your girls like in action and i'd love to show those and kind of have you talk us through what's going on there and and why the activity is going on yeah. For those been, of you that are listening, go to our YouTube channel and you can see the pictures that we're talking about. What we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, Ivan, do you want to throw, go down the list? Oh, and my question is, if we go back to yoga for a second, um, Stanzi said that yoga means what? To yoke. To yoke. Yep. And then I went right to an egg. And so I feel like <laughs> other people don't know what that means. <laughs> and so I'd like someone to explain that to me, please. So... <laughs> So so I, was like, I you, can't be the like I'm not the only dumb one, right? If you think about a yolk, you have the the clear stuff and the the yellow stuff. Yep, it's unified, so that egg. makes the the egg. So it's similar to your body. You have this physical, and you have what I'm gonna call the spirit, um, and it unifies. So to become whole is to yolk all, or to unify your flesh with your awareness, which is sometimes what we call spirit, right? Mm. So if, you're, if your mind is connected to your body or your heart, then again, you, you know what we just talked about, you're aware of the identities that you take on and that you're aware of the things that do not serve you, mm -hmm. the identities that do not serve you. And then you begin to start to purge these things and you become whole in who you say you are and who you are here to be and your divine purpose, then it shows and it just, it's liberated and then you liberate others. Mm -hmm. I hope that's not the longest All right, example. That makes more <laughs> sense to me. Sometimes my yolk is scrambled, but I understand. <laughs> I love the image too, like yolk, cause there's yolk, like an egg. And then also like a yolk, like is used in plow, like in farming, right? With mm -hmm. when you have, which is, I love this image too, where you have two animals that you're trying to go in a direction and pull the plow. And if they're just attached, like if they're attached to the ropes, to the plow, and they're just individual, they can kind of go off in any direction that they want. But mm -hmm. they put a, a yoke is something they put over their shoulders so that they can work together to move in a direction, mm -hmm. which I know in my experience with mindfulness that, that I love that image of yoking it's like okay my mind's doing this and then but my body's doing this my spirit's mm -hmm. all over the place and like yeah. the yoking is like finally kind of bringing them together and 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 moving forward is that yeah. is that kind is that kind of it too ro that's absolutely it i mean you can use so many different images to describe it but yeah that farming and the the egg the egg yolk all of that yeah i'm yeah. from yeah. farmland wisconsin so that makes more that sense, sense to me yeah. yes i understand it <laughs> There we go. I think can we put up some of those pictures and have Ro uh, talk about them because they're they're beautiful photos. Oh, oh, that's the torso, right? Oh yeah, there we the go. Torso art. Yes, and I didn't I didn't get to send you guys the um, actual in person activities because we went to a hunter museum. We went to a um, historical museum here in Chattanooga, and we did this activity, and that was just a weekend ago. Mm. Um, and this torso art and gallery tour was in honor of Women's History Month. So mm -hmm. last month was Women's History Month. So we took the girls to a gallery to see sculptures and paintings that were done by activists and leaders and women that were just standing in their, their truth and their power and 
you know, back in the olden days when women wasn't allowed to dance in the way that they wanted to. Um, and then from there, we went out outdoors and we had this torso art painting. So there on the top right is a, a torso canvas. So we have little small blank canvases and we allow the girls to paint, write, whatever empowers them. And then you can literally frame it and put it in your bedroom mm. or somewhere in your house to kind of empower you as a woman. So we, we um, guided them through a course of what it felt like to have, you know, a female torso. What does that feel like to you? You know, what does it feel like mm. to have this, this space in your body and to hold this space in, as a woman? And it was just a beautiful experience. I want a torso canvas. Yes. <laughs> that is such a cool thing. I'm going to have to look this up. <laughs> yes. Is that a picture of the gallery? Yes, that's one of the galleries we did probably a couple years ago. Um, we were actually, was this Black History Month? I believe it was Black History Month. And a lot of our girls, like I said, they're, un they're from under-resourced communities, so never been to an art gallery before. Mm -hmm. um, so them on art tours and we take them with the theme. So I believe this one was Black History Month. And we asked them to interpret what they saw, you know, emotional wise in that art piece and what they felt in that art piece. And I mean, the girls were brilliant. Like mm. the interpretations that they were having, I was like, wow, I didn't even think of that. Like it was so amazing. Um, but yeah, this was in honor of Black History Month. Very cool. Oh, and this one was as well. So there is a, this artist, this particular artist actually used newspaper articles of um, like a slave history, I would say. And in the middle there, you can see like a cop. And then it was a role of black men that were being harassed by the cop. And then an the interesting thing there is on the far left hand side, there was another cop and he was black. And the um, artist actually took this image and blowed it up and put it on a canvas like that and kind of distorted it a bit. And um, we just interpreted what that felt like to see another person of your um, cultural and your demographic to allow and harassment to happen um, to those people. And the girls, I mean, it was such a beautiful experience. The girls was able to express the upset feelings that they felt about that, the injustice that they felt about that, the um, betrayal. And I mean, these girls are just so brilliant with their interpretations and just really voicing that unapologetically. Mm. So this is also in honor of Black History Month. Very mm. cool. So uh, journaling. This photo. <laughs> yes. So here we were at our outdoor retreat. We were actually inside of the, um, so we were on a farm this day and we're actually inside of the, uh, what is it called? It's like a little venue space on the farm. It started raining, so we had to go in. <laughs> um, but here after yoga, we tell the girls to journal about what they felt, journal about how they were experiencing that day. So that was the, the first morning that we woke up from sleeping in our tents outdoors. Hmm. So we woke up every morning. It was kind of like a ritual. We would wake up. We would go to our mats or we would eat breakfast and then we would go to our mats. And then we would journal about what last night felt like for us. Like, what did it feel like to hear nature wake up with you? What did it feel like to hear nature mm -hmm. fall asleep with you? Um, what emotions did you have? A lot of girls was scared, you know, the first night. Um, and they expressed that they felt safe at that point. By the time we got up that morning, they slept well. Um, but we incorporate a lot of reflection in our retreats as well. Um, like I said, we like to have our participants and ourselves to just reflect on what it is that we're feeling and write that down. You know, like I said, if you can't, if you're afraid to say it, and I always want to introduce the component of writing. Hmm. Very cool. Ah. Oh yeah. So this was a what do you call that? A um, vision board party. Oh, cool. So this is the magazine, maybe magazines. Yep. So this is the day oh. after, or no, this is the last day, the last day of the retreat. Uh, we had a celebration. We were leaving, you know, we were leaving with a celebration. So we allowed the girls to just explore a lot of magazines and cut out things that they felt uh, represented them and represented who they wanted to be in the coming future. 
And yeah, we, we had them painted and placed it on cardboard and take it with them and framed it. And it was very fun. Like girl, they stayed there for about hours just trying to get it right together. You know, they were perfectionists. They were like, oh, <laughs> I got to have this piece. I got to have this piece. Oh, I like her. This is my favorite artist. You know, it was very fun. So <laughs> it invoked a lot of joy and um, laughter. And the girls just did not want to leave. It was so Aww, fun. Yeah. That's so cool. I think we have one more. Ah, oh. <laughs> relax. Yes. Wasn't she so like creative there? I was like, how did you do that so neatly? <laughs> That's so cool. So this is where we um, have the girls paint the yoga mats at the end. Oh, of the oh that's a yoga mat. I that, that wasn't like clicking in my head. That's so cool. Yeah. So we have them paint, do art on their yoga mat. So the yoga mats are blank. They're blank canvases when we give them to them. And I'm like, you know what? We want to spice it up. So draw, paint, create anything on your mat that's going to empower you when you step on that mat. That's going to, you know, um, remind you of why you're here. So we've had several, we have several pictures like that, but this one was very neat and cool. And she was like, relax. When I get on the mat, I just want to relax. You know, I just want to just drop all of my worries and concerns and fears. And, you know, you wouldn't think that teenagers have a lot of worry or that they Mm -hmm. should, but you know, a lot of pressure from school. So that was her her affirmation. I love that. (laughs) Is that your cat, Winnie, growling? Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> this is, I'm so glad that we now have individual audio tracks so we can just take that out. But <laughs> no, leave it you, in. You have no idea what's happening over here. Uh, Ro, <laughs> you do not want cats. Um, just throwing that out there. Um, but I would love to do the um, visual visualization meditation um, and have you lead us through that to end today to give everybody something that they can take right now from here and use in their own lives. Mm. Absolutely. This is my favorite thing to do. So as I shared with you earlier, um, I've never really had a role model and I think role models are great. I think they are guides to our highest um, expression, but they're not your way, right? So the meditation that I want to do, I want to help guide you and visualizing yourself as your your role model. So let's get started, guys. All right. I've never done this on a podcast. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't either, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> so I like to call this visualization, visualization the who am I visualization. So when you're ready, find yourself a nice comfortable seat if you're driving don't do this while driving (laughs) (laughs) just pause it and then wait till you're sitting down so try to find a nice comfortable seat and i always like to um encourage everyone to engage their spine i'm sorry their core and lengthen their spine up so it's always nice to just really get the spine as nice and long as possible really poise sitting up straight um envision yourself like a monument right So nice and long, dropping the shoulders down. Maybe you roll them around just a bit just to get them relaxed. And then give yourself a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, relax the shoulders down. Good, one more deep breath in. Then on this exhale, go ahead and close your eyes softly. From here, notice your body. Notice if, there, if there's any spaces you are holding tension. So oftentimes when we try to lengthen the spine, we may engage the legs or the feet or some other parts of the body. See if we can relax those areas as well. And then give yourself a few more deep breaths in, keeping the eyes closed. And as you connect with your breath, just notice how they, how it's flowing in your body. Just 
see if you can notice where it's beginning in the middle of your or in between your torso. So sometimes our breath starts at the top of our chest. Sometimes it can go deep under our lungs, and sometimes we can pull it in from the belly. So just notice where your breath is pulling from. And then on the next two breaths, see if you can pull deeply from within your core. And exhale out fully. Now, while we're here centered in the core, again, notice your spine. Notice how you're sitting up here in this position. Notice the strength of your position. Notice the confidence you feel just by sitting up straight. And then just for a brief moment, notice what a successful you looks like. And I'm going to use the term successful loosely because success can mean many things to different people. Or maybe we think of ourselves as a happy person. What does a person, what, are, what do you look like as a person who's not attached to the idea of what is correct? for you to be happy in society. So see if we can just focus on visualizing that for just a second. What does a free version of you look like? Free to do as you please, free to express as you please, free to be kind and compassionate. To see yourself smiling, maybe you see yourself dancing Maybe you see yourself running down the field, cornfields, or running down a park or skating. What does that joy look like to you? Continue to breathe. Now, as you continue to breathe, feel that torso, that spine one more time there and see if you can pull the feeling of your spine, the feeling of your torso into that image. So maybe the idea is to feel a force pulling you to that image of a joyful, happy, successful you. So feel that force just pulling you towards it and you're connecting yourself to that image of yourself. Do you feel a little resistance or is it, is it pretty easy to connect with that person? So maybe initially we envisioned that person outside of us. So see if we can connect to it. And if it's challenging, no worries, it's a practice. But while you're here, just see if you can now breathe as that person. So deep breath in, maybe a smile rises on your face as you embody that new, joyful, liberated person. Exhale it out. Few more breaths here, just feeling the experience of the vision that you have created for yourself. Who am I? I am happy. I am healed. I am free to express in different ways. I am an artist in my own right. Who 
who am I? And as you ask yourself that, create your own affirmations. Continue to breathe together. Maintaining your posture. And as we close it out, let's seal who you've decided you want it to be with a few deep breaths. So we're gonna seal that person in right now. Okay, so we're gonna deep breath in. And then as you exhale out, you're letting go of all of the doubts, all of the things that no longer serves this new person. One more inhale in, pulling more of that person in, exhaling out what no longer serves that person. And last one in, last breath here, big breath in from the core. Exhale out with joy. Beautiful. Now slowly with ease and grace, begin to blink your eyes open and celebrate that you just did a quantum leap into the new you. <laughs> wow. I'm like tearing up a little bit. No, I like had, <laughs> had to, I like had, you probably could see me, but I had tears like streaming oh my down my goodness. face about halfway through. That was so beautiful, Ro. Thank you. And just and I found like like before the exercise, I was thinking, oh, I don't know what I would, you know, what narrative or whatever, what what I don't know. I just didn't know what to expect. But it was like so quickly it came to my head of like what um what I wanted and what was it getting in my way. And that mm -hmm. Oh gosh, just every part of that. And then when when you were like, okay, bring your spine at that image, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little resistance, yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, oh God, that was beautiful. I need to do that every day. Yeah, I mean, it's- And very, you it's, can now. I can yeah, now. Can. Yeah, and it's, it's really that simple. You know, it's, we don't have to hustle to become that person. We don't have to go through all these rigorous ideas of, who, what we have to do to become that person, just visualize it. And, you know, this divine thing that exists will literally lead you to becoming that. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but it, it's going to happen and it's going to shed a lot of those false identities that we hold on to. Mm. Mm. So, I, Richard, how was that for you? I, I mean, I, usually, I by the, usually, <laughs> usually by the, uh, like an image popped in my head right away, but then as you were talking, it sort of morphed into something else that I like kept getting more and more excited about. Like, Aww. I was like, oh my God, no, that's it. No, yeah. that's it. Like, you know, I was like feeling away like, oh, okay. Like allowing myself yeah. to actually go there. Usually by yeah. the end on a Thursday night, because we record some of these on Thursday nights. I'm tired by the end, uh -huh. of, end of the day, but I'm so like, okay. And then when we're done here, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then yeah. I'm going to like, oh. And that, those are all layers of ourselves. So you jumping to different images is definitely normal. I did too a little bit, even during my my leading of this, because um, mm. we're artists. I mean, we're, we're, we want to express ourselves in different ways. So that's definitely natural as well. Mm. Oh. This yeah. has been so wonderful, Ro. And I'm so impressed with, your heart and your mission. I think it's such important, beautiful work that you're doing. How can people learn more about you, follow you, support you, all those things? Yes, thank you so much for having me. Um, you can find our, the work that I'm doing with the young girls at girlstance.org. So that's www.girlstance.org. Um, you can message me there. I, all the messages come directly to me. If you have any questions or want to virtually volunteer as an instructor or host a workshop or any type of um, activity that 
you would like to share with people through our platform, we're definitely open to that. We love meeting new artists. We love meeting new um, instructors and we love introducing our girls to different forms of expression. Um, if you're in a Chattanooga area, hey, reach out to me and we can mm -hmm. work out something to get you on at the camps. And I hope to expand this worldwide at some point, right? Mm. So if you're listening and you love the idea of um, outdoor educational retreats and you have resources that could support bringing it to your city, definitely reach out to me. I would love to connect with you. Um, me personally, my personal brand as Rola Shea, you can meet, you can find me on my website at www.rolashea, that's R-O-E-L-A-S-H-A-Y.com. I almost forgot how to spell my name. Uh, <laughs> it's a complicated name. It's, yeah. You're not alone. It happens to the best of us. And um, I'm on Instagram as well at Rolashea, so R-O-E-L-A-S-H-A-Y. Um, on my website, you see all the fun things that I get into. I, I do vocal um, recording. I jump on some tracks sometimes and I'll leave some affirmations or a meditation and I do visual art. I have a commercial that I recently did on my website and I just get into all types of art expression. I mean, who knows what's coming next? But if you connect with me on Instagram or on my website, you can stay tuned. Yet That's she awesome. didn't know art was part of it. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to our website, heartsneedart.org, click on the podcast link, and we'll put all of uh, Rose links um, on the show notes. So I want to thank you for being here, Ro. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening or watching, and we will see you or you will hear us next week. Keep creating, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast produced by Hearts Need Art, creative support for patients and caregivers, in partnership with the National Organization for Arts and Health. You can help others learn about the healing power of the arts by subscribing, sharing, and reviewing the podcast wherever you listen or watch. The podcast is hosted by Richard Wilmore, co-hosted by Constanza Rader, and produced by Ivan Briones. Our theme song, Songbird, is written and performed by Natalie Lane. Visit heartsneedart.org to learn how you can support our mission to create joy with people facing life-altering health challenges. Join us next week to learn more ways you can create arts for the health of it. The views expressed on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Heart Seed Art, their staff, board members, or other affiliates. All content is created for informational purposes only. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice or to diagnose and treat any health condition. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professional with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard on this podcast.